and then a uh, public subnet has to be there and uh, routing tables for the public subnet and then private subnet so from uh, private subnet we have to uh, uh, create the nat gateway and attach the routing table of the private subnet and that has to be associated with the public subnet okay fine so my client has a requirement uh, they wants to create a uh, application load balancer okay so in order to create a application load balancer what is the pre requirement what other things should be there in place uh, for application load balancer we actually require the path of that uh, um, uh, main file that the application is running over there and in the port um, we have to create the target groups um, and then uh, we have we have to configure the application load balancer what about the network pre requirement for uh, load balancer application load balancer network pre requirement the protocol that we want to use whether it is uh, http or https you don't want vpc or or subnet or... for creating application load balancer yeah definitely ah oh, that time asking what is the pre requirement in terms of network before you start create low application load balancer uh, okay in that case like uh, we would require the vpc to which that our application is going to run and then the subnets uh, correspondingly um, in case if it is we are running as a private subnet uh, the application is running in the private subnet so in private subnet uh, id should be there and um, security group as well and apart from that um, yeah as i, think, I told I think, uh, the I think application you're still not understanding my question uh so in order to configure application load balancer what is the network requirement how many vpc you need minimum how many subnets you need minimum A minimum two vpcs uh, vpc should be same and the subnets we can uh, we can have two subnets uh, in a different region different region or different availability zone availability zone sorry different availability zone okay okay so fine so uh coming back i have a uh, application load balancer uh, my backend easy to instance right it shows nlp okay so how do you troubleshoot what may be the possibilities for this problem uh if the ec2 instance shows nlt uh, we need to check whether the port is listening to the ec2 instance whether that uh, protocol whether we are using http or https that is uh, the service is running inside the instance that we have to check these can be the reasons um the listeners we, we need to check whether yeah uh, the ping is actually working or not so all these things we have to check is there nothing else Apart from mainly the service, apart from mainly the service, hmm. okay. If your instance back in instance of your application load balancer shows the status checkers one bar two, so how okay. do you troubleshoot that? Status check one bar two. Okay, so in that case, um, uh, we can. go to the um, uh, cloud watch like what is happening in the instance and with, uh, the first first of all the one bar two check is um, first thing we need to check whether the instance is uh, reachable uh, instance reachability is uh, properly working or not uh, and then the, um, uh, the components inside the instance are properly working or those are the two checks that it is performing so if it is one bar two means then uh, we may need to restart that instance okay all right so could you tell me i have one uh, 10 ec2 instance running in my account out of 10 okay. one specific ec2 instance volumes are uh, not encrypted so that instance right contain three volume all three volumes are not encrypted my client uh, asking me to encrypt those three volumes so how do you what is the process in order to encrypt the unencrypted volume which attached currently in the server server is running encrypt the volume encryption um no idea here i have not come across this encryption part okay so what about uh, uh 
S3. So S3, uh, we have something called custom bucket policy. In what scenario in your exposure you created a customized S3 policy? In what scenario? Hmm. In your project, have you ever get opportunity to work with S3 custom bucket policy and what scenario it is? What use case it is? Okay, so in one of the cases, like uh, for example, if that S3 bucket should not be the public, it should not be accessed by all the um, uh, uh, users. So in that case, uh, we'll create the custom uh, uh, S3 bucket policies and we'll mention like what are the users has to be particularly uh, have access to that bucket, whether it is it should be read or, or, or read write or like that. Okay. So what is the difference between IAO policy and S3 custom bucket policy? IAM policy is like um, uh, if, uh, okay, if we are apply that IAM rules to all the, uh, I mean, uh, for the any groups, uh, the all the groups will be having that particular uh, uh, policy rule, I mean, um, policy access to the S3 bucket, but the customized uh, uh, policies will have one, um, we can choose that uh, users like uh, who, uh, I mean, particular users based on the uh, customized rules that we are giving, only those users can be accessed. Okay. Can you elaborate your uh, current infrastructures, IAM architecture? IAM architecture. We, um, no, Hari Hara. Um, we have not uh, got opportunity to like create uh, explicit architecture for our IAM rules. Okay, okay. Fine, then, uh, Balamarana, I am done with my part. Okay, I'll update the feedback to HR. They will revert you. Hmm? Thank you.